And then after you've gone through encyclopedias and books, then it gets to the point where you get to articles. And some people may just skip straight to articles because they know that the subject they're researching is just too new and emergent that they won't find any books and the encyclopedias will be useless. And hey, that's fine because it just means that the subject you're researching is too cutting edge to have made it all the way back. If you look at the at the information life cycle, it, it, it's, too, it's too recent to have made it, its way to this level. But the thing is, uh, in a university, especially if you're doing kind of a research paper type thing, not as much an industrial paper or like an economic survey or, or business plan or that kind of more like industrial analysis type work, then you can use all the other databases. But if you're doing like a classic paper, topical paper, um, you're expected to use scholarly peer-reviewed journal articles, okay? And, and I'll explain very, very simply the difference between scholarly and peer-reviewed journal articles on the one hand and classic uh, newspaper, magazine, trade publication articles on the other hand, okay? Because I want to distinguish them very, very simply. It, and it has to do with the business model. Everything's about business. You follow the money, you understand how the world works. I forget who said that. Actually, I do remember, but it's not important. Okay. Um, I'm a journalist, I work for the Gazette. I'm a journalist, I work for The Economist. I'm a journalist, I work for McLean's. I'm a journalist, I work for Retailing Canada, okay? Or I'm a freelancer, it doesn't matter. I get a call, I get an email, my boss tells me, go and research this breaking topic, okay? Retailing Canada wants to know about the student protests in Montreal and how it's affecting local retailers and how they're reacting. Interesting, okay, let's do it. So I go out meet some, you know, meet some local people, do some research, go to StatsCan, pull some data. And I write up a piece and I send it to my editor. And the editor says, no, get me some more blood. Get me some, you know, get me some mad people. I want people who want this to stop or I want to create content. The idea is that newspapers, magazines, and, 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 and trade publications and trade journals, they want to sell. They want to be interesting. They want to entertain. Some of them do want to inform, and some of them do have a very strict editorial approach to how they present information, but those are the better ones, right? We call them uh, newspapers of record or magazine of record, right? They, they try to achieve that niche in the magazine newspaper trade of providing credible, valid information, okay? So, I mean... Uh, some are better than others, and usually, you know, you, you refer to them like the Wall Street Journal or The Economist or, uh, you know, some are, are, are of record, right, or, or elevated because they want to operate in that niche of the information market. Others are more sensationalist prone, right? Uh, so, so when you're looking at those, at that field of newspaper magazines and, and, and trade journals, you have to be careful about what the editorial style is. Right? But also, there are constraints on those papers. You can only write so much. Right? You, can, you can't spend 25 pages explaining the subtleties of what's going on. You have to fit it into a thousand words. You have to have three pictures. You have, it to, you have to have it ready by next Friday. Right? Those are the kind of constraints that mean that the articles, although the, the professional journalist or, or the people writing those pieces try to make them as good and as valuable as they are for their communities, well, they have limitations, but that's fine. That's the way that business operates, okay? So that's the business world. So once you're ready with your piece, you send it to your publisher, they review it, they like it, they don't like it, you get paid, you don't get paid, that's how it works, okay? That's the magazine, newspaper, trade journal issue. On the other hand, you have people in universities. You have researchers whose goal is to write science. They want to find out facts. They want to analyze facts at such a high level of quality that it creates a new fact, a new theory, a new understanding of society. And that's what, amongst other things, universities are trying to achieve, or I hope they're achieving it in society. And that's why people, you're lear learning how to do methodology, you're learning to evaluate sources, you're learning to criticize, you're learning to find the good stuff and build your own conception of the world at a university. Because ultimately, the goal is to produce new knowledge, is to produce new understandings. So the problem, well, the, or the business issue with that is that kind of activity doesn't fit 
easily within the business operations of other types of like magazines, right? McLean's, well, you know, it's, it's okay, but it has, you know, you, sometimes you need a little bit more space to explain what you have to say. And you have to provide long footnotes and you have to provide the very detailed bibliography to make sure that your readers know that you've done your work as a researcher and you're signaling them that you've dug this issue all the way out, right? So you have to quote all those papers one after the other to make sure that, ah, yes, yes, they've researched this issue thoroughly, okay? And that's why there's a segment of the publishing world of, of, of that journals, magazines and journals that we call scholarly and peer reviewed. And people in universities like, you know, eventually you at some point, but I'm trying to I'm trying to do that. I write a long article explaining my research focus and I do a methodology to analyze something special about the world. I my personal interest is in copyright, for example. So I'm looking at digital copyright issues. So I, I, I build a methodology and I, I you know do my, my analysis and once I'm done I write up my results and it's usually you know something that's more than ten pages long with lots of footnotes and dry text quoting, you know, dead authors and that kind of stuff. Uh, and I send it to a journal. And that's what your professors do as well. And that's what PhD students, master's students, and, and actually that's what you're learning to do by writing this exact paper that you're writing. You're being groomed to write a scholarly peer-reviewed article. So the idea is they want you to use scholarly peer-reviewed article if that's what you're being groomed to do, despite the fact that you, they haven't said that from the get-go. That's the irony, I guess. So the, what happens when I'm done writing my piece, I send it to a journal, to a, a peer-reviewed journal. Probably I try to aim for the top ones, the ones that everybody read, the ones that are important in my field. I send it to them, and then the editor receives it and send it, send it, they send my draft to a few of my peers, other researchers, other experts in the field who are to evaluate the quality of my work. Not just if the English is good or if it's well written, Right, But if my methodology is sound, if the conclusions I draw from the results I have obtained talk to the hypothesis that I have built, that kind of stuff, right? They want to make sure that it's good enough for me when I conclude, when I bring my new knowledge to society, to make sure it's of that academic quality, okay? And that's why it's different, because all of the people involved, the, 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 the editor who, who receives my piece sends it to other colleagues, my peers, who evaluate it, who review it, peer review, right? Or scholars in the field who are experts. All of these people are volunteers. And I don't pay, I don't get additional pay for doing this. I'm doing this as part of my work at a university, but I, they are not going to send me a check for $100 after I've done that, or maybe. Usually they don't. Actually, never, but that's another story. Uh, so the idea is that the goal for this is the advancement of science. And then university libraries uh, subscribe to these journals so that researchers can continue this process. Okay. So the whole business model is different. The idea is to build facts, and the articles tend to be longer and more, uh, and more detailed and more footnoted than otherwise.